Olivia Hurd in the back is the DS, and then up front, back into the lineup after missing one match, Amani Bush, Kirsten Barton on the other outside, and in the middles, it's the freshman Julia Hunt and Katie Wessels. For the Ducks, a new setter, Chris Klein not getting the start. Uh, Roberta Purishai will get the second start at that setter spot. Morris uh, is your starting libero. And the player to watch, Mimi Collier, number 15 for the Oregon Ducks as we get you underway. Oregon with the first serve. Touching that tape. And the first swing, hitting that antenna, it will be an Oregon point. Barton, number nine, going for that high hand, just missed a little wide. Maybe some nerves early on in this match. So the Ducks on the board first. We go right at the libero, Lauren Bays. The overpass, and it somehow lands right here. The edge and down for the Husky side out. Dogs getting lucky with that one. One of the biggest differences between the great teams and the, the Big Ten and the lower level is these out of system plays. We want to get swings. They got away with one there. This is Katie Wessels. Middle back to serve. Colby Neal just having to tip that one over. Keep your eye on Amani Bush, who just tipped that one over. She's been a little bit dinged up, missed the last match for Washington back in the lineup today. Outside to the lefty Glover, and uh, she puts a hammer to it. Oregon's, Oregon's running fast, and Glover hit, takes that one high, just as Oregon was intending to do, that deep third of the court. Nice to see a good, clean swing after a lot of tips in that rally. Noemi Glover, the 6'2 sophomore, opposite out of Rancho Santa Fe, California. Wilson in the middle, and... Uh, He's able to hit the floor. Julia Hunt, a player to watch for. The true freshman coming all the way from Covington, Kentucky is a good one. Yeah, she's a stud, and UW's going to want to keep feeding her in the middle, not only to get those kills, but also spread the offense, create some space at the pins. Here's another true freshman, Alexis Howry, the setter onto the court now. And if Washington can get lucky with an overpass, so can the Ducks. Oh, those are tough. Those are tough, just a communication error. We've got to take care of those simple plays on both sides if they want to win this match. So maybe for both teams in this rivalry series, getting some of that adrenaline out. Howry, the freshman setter, tracks that one down. The block is tooled. Nice job by the Huskies to use the block. Great tool off the block there. It wasn't a great set. She was out of position, and instead of shying away, went right at the hands. A great tool out of bounds. It was Kuhn Fletcher with the kill. Now Barton got the serve, and she gets the ace. We talked about the service pressure. That was well done by Barton. And again, this Oregon offense is so great. They're going to have to, the Huskies are going to have to put a lot of pressure, and that is about as good as it gets. Peyton the sideline there, great start. The 10th ace of the season for Kirsten Barton. Outstanding freshman season last year, and she's continued that. Outside to Collier, tip, Howry gets there. Now Maddie Inslee with the roll shot. Good dig high and over. We rack do it again, and pretty swing from Oni Ofebu, the 6'3 redshirt senior in the middle out of Cerritos, California. Great swing by Ofebu, working hard in transition. And what you'll see from her, she's not only running to the pin, that slide, but she's also staying close to the setter, which is even harder for the Washington block to track. Good execution by the Washington offense, and Hunt with her second kill. You know, great offenses, are one, they want to keep it even, a balance with, with an emphasis. And so you're going to see both sides trying to get their middles involved, especially early. So Washington runs a 6-2. They have a lot of weapons. The two setters interchanging, Molly Wilson, the veteran, and the true freshman out of Silverton, Oregon, Alexis Howry. Michelle Oabete with a swing. Eskies get a touch on the block. 
And is there a touch there? No. So that one sails on Inslee for the Oregon point. Yeah, what a nice start to that rally by Morris. Reading that short serve, Lauren Bays has been doing that the last few series. Incredible first touch so they get a good swing. Put some pressure on and end up making UW make an error. Hensley trying to go off hands, but instead it sails on her. Another kill for Kuhn Fletcher, the 6'2 fifth year senior out of Trinidad and Tobago. She played four years at South Carolina and finishing her career here at UW. Nice, nice high swing by her. That, that pass is over closer to area two, that, that's a tough angle for a right-handed hitter, and she does a great job creating space. Nice pass to start things, and it ends with a Colby Neal smash. Kind of a classic FBSO first ball side out by Oregon. One of the things Matt Ulmer, head coach, talked about that he'd like to see in the next month is that scoring off of that first pass set hit. Matt Ulmer doing a great job with this Oregon Ducks squad. That one by Inslee is put off the block and down for the kill. Matt Ulmer dealing with six new starters this season, and yet they continue to roll in his eighth season as Oregon head coach. He has them ranked top 10 in the nation, and he says, that's great. We are looking for how we can improve to get into that top four. He's been to the Elite Eight two years in a row, but want to break through. Yeah, Oregon's always, you know, that team that's going to grind it out. They're super physical and just trying to unlock more ways to get better. Not just working hard physically, but also mentally. These two teams, what a showdown. Each have won 16 games. Oregon 16 and three, Washington 16 and four. So Leslie Gabriel Tui, as she is known, Leslie Tui Asasopo, her maiden name, and had a lot of injuries she had to deal with in her first season. The year two, certainly a 13-match win streak to start this season was exactly what she needed. Heck of a start for the Huskies, and they're looking for a few more big wins here in the Big Ten to kind of get some momentum after a few losses, but certainly she's excited about where they, where they are and where they can go the rest of the season. So back and forth here in set one, Oregon with a 3-0 scoring run to take the two-point lead. Great serve, the ace. Had some good heat on that one from Oabete. And so Washington will call the first time out of the match as Oregon on a 4-0 scoring run has taken the three-point lead. Oregon behind some good serving, putting pressure on Washington. The Oregon Ducks with a couple of aces already, both from Michelle Oabete, and she is back with the ball in her hand again. Oregon with a 4-0 scoring run stopped on the service error, and so Washington will get their crack at it. Both sides with a few misses, but you love to see it deep. At least the passers have to make a decision. Way better error than serving right into the net. Job keeping that one out of the net by Oregon. Big swing, handle the overpass. Barton chases it down. Now back to Bush. Block there and down to the floor. Mimi Collier can, connecting as well with Colby Neal for the big block. You know, Mimi's a nice combination of being super physical and also really well trained with the eye. Great discipline on the block. She waits to see that inside set and then drops in and goes and gets it. So Oregon with the three-point lead. Outside to Barton, that was well done. Just past the 10-foot line for Barton on the cross-court kill. Woo, great swing by Barton. Afobu was stressed a little bit with the speed and trying to get over there so fast and reach, left that inside seam, and Barton takes advantage. Martin coming off a career high game with 20 digs along with 16 kills. The double double versus Maryland. The Huskies have won three matches in a row. The Ducks have won three matches in a row. Something has got to go here today in Seattle between these two squads. 
Barton, again, another good swing, but scrambled by Oregon's defense. Fletcher, she's been good early. Some good swings on it. Her third kill of the match on three swings. Yeah, such a great high swing deep in the rally. The quality of swings as the rally goes on is, is typically going to make or break which team wins this match. Oabete, or excuse me. Yeah, Oabete out. That was Glover, rather. They're going to re-rack Glover, the lefty. And a good dig by Bays. And block, but out. And so Mimi Collier tooling that block for the kill. So Oregon get Ofobu going early in the middle. It creates a little bit of space as that middle blocker from UW has to pay attention to her. Can't quite get out, and Mimi Collier takes advantage. So Daly McClellan, the 5'8 senior. Oregon product out of Canby, Oregon. Back to serve. Martin, back line, perfect place. Deep end line. Great shot by Barton. This pass a little bit off the net. She stays behind the ball, so she has a little bit more range and, and again hits that, that back third. Always a great shot for a pin hitter. She did not play for about a month, Kirsten Barton. And Oregon's defense having to scramble after the good serve. And Washington again. Just couldn't get it over on the free ball. That's the second time this set Oregon is coming away with a point. Yeah, those on a plays, scramble drill. Those plays are so frustrating. Also, it's just a game changer when you can move on. Reset. Next point. Collier trying for the line just wide. And so Washington pulls to within one here in set one from. Seattle. Lauren Bays, a veteran libero out of Orange County, California. That one into the net on the hitting error for Ofebu. So we are all knotted up. 13 apiece. Washington had trailed by as many as three. And as they like to say, new ball game now. That's right. Talk about Washington wanting to put Washington wanting to put service pressure on, but Morris is doing a great job, and they've been on her early. I'm sure, they'd like to see the outside hitter take a few more. Oh, good decision by Oabete, who was there, and that thing just kept floating from Bays and floated out of bounds. But that's a tough call. Yeah, at least she's got to make a decision again. Much better than serving into the net. to serve. Maya De Los Reyes, the 5'2 junior DS out of Long Beach, California. Coming off three aces in her last match. Inslee, heavy ball all the way back. Taken by Bays and now just having to push over. Pancake up. Well done by Howry. Looked like it was going to touch the floor from Oregon. Inslee too much on it. Split the block, but that one wide of the square. Oregon putting up a great block, and that's what it forces the other outsides to do, is they're trying to hit edges, trying to get around it, and sometimes you're going to miss. Inslee again, this time just past the attack line for the kill. Oh, she's got such a powerful swing. No, I love when setters, when an outside hitter makes an error, you want to give it right back to him, let him fix it. It is a total momentum for the team, for the setter, for the hitter. Love to see it. Yeah, it's such a good point. Overpass and handled by Inslee. So she'll take the easy kill. And again, the service pressure creating problems for Oregon, and it's knotted up at 15 again. Ooh. 
out of the back. Collier, Bays ready. Inslee again goes to her left hand, and Washington takes the first lead of the set on the creativity from Inslee. What a great shot by Ensley. She's got such a big, heavy arm, and she's been swinging tough tonight. To use this off-speed, her left-hand jam, tooling the block, it's an incredible high-level play. Hanging up in midair, and changing her mind to go with the left. Oh, a bet hangs high, but someone is wide, and so the Huskies on their own run take a two-point lead here in set one. It has been back and forth, each team exchanging blows here in Seattle. Shapey, I said, well, Halloween is coming up, and you've got four kids, Coach. How are you going to stay out of the, the Halloween basket? He says, nah, I, I got it, I got it. Right, it's committed. He said, I just gave up Dr. Pepper, and that's been the big thing. Gotta love it. Health tips from Matt Ulmer, but Washington, a 5-0 scoring run. And again, out of the timeout, continuing to add on, and Maddie Ensley has been leading the way. Yeah, I love that. She made an error, her center went right back to her, and then she rattles off a few points, using some off-speed and her big powerful arm. She's gonna need to keep mixing it up. She wants to keep it going. Husky's block tough. And then it was Bush. Getting the touch, that one's sailing well out of bounds. The Huskies with their largest lead here in set one. I think these Northwest teams are leaning into the Big Ten style, blocking well in great positions, and each team using edges high off the hands. Another great swing. A 6-0 Washington scoring run. And they lead 19 to 15. Hits the tape. Rolls the Huskies' way. And a nice job ending the run by Sophie Gregoire, the 6'1 redshirt freshman. Local product out of Dundee, Oregon. Dundee, Oregon, wine country down there in the Willamette Valley. Now we're talking. Great place to visit. Now we're talking. <laughs> to Bush, block there, but out of bounds. Bush able to tool it, and she is fired up. The Huskies are the first one to 20. You know, Oregon got what they wanted, a, a great serve, UW out of system, and Molly Wilson does a great job getting that in the hitter's window, give the Huskies a chance, and they take advantage. Now the Huskies, it's always interesting with the 6-2 system, two setters, uh, but Washington has been really playing at a high level offensively. Molly Wilson, in her fourth year, learned under Ella Mae Powell, the outstanding setter for five years for Washington, led him to the final four. And now getting her shot. <laughs> Service error, rare one here in set one. Yeah, typically, Each. both teams are gonna wanna serve in around 90% of the time. That's typically when you're putting enough pressure on them, but also not missing too many to end up hurting you. It's always a nice balance when you're trying to Think about service pressure. Bart, boy, she got up quickly and hammered that one down. Another great run by Molly Wilson. But Neil can't quite get there to close that block. UW on the run, but keeping speed, putting a little pressure. You see a little bit of a seam there, and UW takes advantage. Wessels uses the tape for the ace. Sometimes you take a little luck, and the Huskies extending their lead to five. Just like we planned it, <laughs> right off the net. <laughs> Using that tape. Of course, when that happens, it's so difficult to react when that ball hits that tape. And it is the third ace of the first set for Washington. Followed up by the service error. You know, in the last in the last matchup these two teams played, UW was leading in the fifth by quite a lot, and Oregon came back. So it'll be interesting to see how the Huskies respond in these end of set points. Washington led 10 to five, the first of 15 in set five. They also led 12-9. And Oregon rallied. It was a wonderful comeback by Oregon out of the middle. Hunt with another swing that finds the floor. 
Uh, Oregon trying to get the middles going in trans there. Can't quite get a clean swing, although I like the idea. And Utah plays a nice high ball to start the rally, give their hitters time to transition and go get the thing. Matt Ulmer talking about Julia Hunt and said she hits a laser. It's out of the middle as a freshman. She was injured tonight hitting 399. Very effective. Barton. Nice dig by Morris, the libero for Oregon. Ah, and then Mimi Collier finds that back area for the kill. I call that one kind of a jumbo shrimp. A high roll shot deep is probably one you want to be able to play defensively, but every once in a while you sneak it in there. Jumbo shrimp. Jumbo shrimp. Reminds me of Tom Hanks. And Forrest Gump. Oregon looking to hit that back line instead. It is the service error, and so set point number one, and the Washington fans getting on their feet, holding up the Ws. Nice crowd out here on a Wednesday night in Seattle on the eve of Halloween. to dig that one out and on the back line. Great placement by Ofebu. Ofebu looked like she missed hit that a little bit, but got it in there enough, adjusted at the end there. Really impressed with Morris in the back row here. Making some great first contacts to help her team. Amy Collier has changed her serve a little bit and is dialed in. Good serve there, had to be saved in the free ball for Oregon. No, they say it hit the court and so set point number three and you gotta wonder as you mentioned Oregon was able to come from behind in Eugene to take set five after Washington was completely in control so set point number three coming up Take it against the 10th ranked 71. But needs more help as the rest of her team pretty quiet in set one. Clear. The block able to touch that. Now Barton gets another kill. The well, Huskies playing with a lot of energy here on their home floor. Yeah, you can just feel kind of the momentum coming for the Huskies right now. Taking you know, good swing after good swing, putting a lot of pressure on the on the Ducks. And a nice assist there by Lauren Bays off the pass. Perfect placement for Barton. Oh, that, no stopping that. Boy, that was quick and powerful. Febu, probably with the hardest hit ball of the night. It's about as good as it gets when that middle of running kind of a 31 or a gap, that's one of the harder plays because it happens so fast. So for Oregon to have success tonight, they're gonna need to keep those clean attacks in the middle create some space for their pin hitters. That was beautiful. Ayo Febu, she's got three kills now. Bush, the block set up by Collier and Ofebu. So back to back big plays by Ofebu. Just denied on that one. Collier again making another really great read and a physical move. That strong left hand, exactly where UW is trying to attack. She points it towards the court and gets a nice block. Back to Bush. Pretty set by Molly Wilson, and Bush handles it cleanly. You know, both sides are really focused on that first ball side out. So on the first pass, first set, can we get a really good, clean kill? It's a sign of great teams when you can do, do that really well. Ducks, good to see her back. Chris Klein, the 5'11 redshirt freshman, missed the last match. And it was Roberta Purishai, Oregon's other setter, getting the start tonight. Klein out on the court now for Oregon. 
Martin going tip. Great hustle play to keep that alive from McClellan. Set a little bit off. Bush has to just tip it over. Heard. DS there, no touch. And that one sailing. Kirsten Martin saying, Coach Tui. There's a touch, and now Tui hesitates. I love that moment when the coach looks at the player and asks, did you touch it? Oh, I love it. Coach Gabriel looked over as Martin said, touch, touch, put her fingers together, which is the universal sign, yeah. right? For the are you touch. Are you? And then she kind of turned away. And coach Gabriel was like, well, I guess not. We're not going to challenge that one. And uh, Oregon now leading five to two. Carl, you're one of the leading point scorers in the Big Ten, finding ways to do it from the service line. Great seam she just attacked. This is one of the harder seams to pass. If she serves again from area five all the way over here to this outside hitter, the DS in the back, it's a really tough angle. Just too much on that one from Mimi Collier. As you mentioned it, making a decision by Washington's serve receive. They let that one go, and that one just missed. Alexis Howry, a two-time Gatorade State Player of the Year in Oregon. Silverton, Oregon, which is near the Salem area. And Washington will take the ball handling error, a little sloppy overpass, and they will slam it down for the point. That was and again, to Fletcher. Fun to hear Coach Gabriel talk about what a, a fighter, what a competitor Howry is, and what an impact she's had on the program. It's got to be a special match for her. Oh, and that serve carried. Might have been out of bounds, but again, Oregon having to make a tough decision late in serve receive, and Howry gets the ace. So they're attacking that front row outside hitter. You're going to go ahead and see Oregon change their passing formation. We'll see how UW attacks it. Oh, you can't stop that. Another gorgeous play, this time on the slide for Ofebu. That time it worked. So as an offense, you want to put your best passers where most of the serves go. And that time it worked out for Oregon's advantage, but it's tough to pass with two. There's a lot more court to cover. There's a lot of seams, so it's always kind of a risk reward when you're making that decision. It's Washington as well right now, two back and serve receive. Zoria Hurd handles it, and Barton will finish it. Boy, she's really been explosive out there at the pin. It's always fun to set hitters that play with a lot of conviction, you know, and, and they've got a rhythm to their movements and they go hard at the end. You want to go slow to fast as you're attacking. And both sides are doing a great job of that, but in particular, UW right now is, Barton's doing a great job. And an ace. Washington's serve has been tough. That is their fifth ace of the match. It's a nice float serve into the seam. Both players thinking they're going to go for it. Causes a little bit of chaos. That's exactly what Washington wants to do. So Barton with the six kills, also two aces. This time she plays it short. Oregon handles it. Inslee. Offense gets there, but sends it straight over. Barton with the roll shot. Set, sends it back for Washington. Bays out to Fletcher. Maybe Collier. Long rally. Good up by Bays. Quick reaction to keep it alive. And then the triple block there by Oregon, and they finally finish it. No, I'm sorry. Must have been a net violation or underneath in the scramble underneath the net. Seeing the replay here. Oh, we oh we came under or got a net on that second attack. So the long rally looked like it was gonna go Oregon's way, and instead it is Washington taking the point and a two-point lead. Oh, Abete rising above that block, but Bay's there. She's played well and then hammered out of the middle. 
good looking swing by Julia Hunt. As you, if you're in offense and you're running quicks and trans, you're setting that middle of the court in transition, which means off a dig. That's a good sign you're playing some good volleyball. Game here in Seattle, and you might get a Starbucks card. A student section saying, you bet. I'll take a little caffeine here. It's, it's only 7.15 tonight. Need my shot of espresso. Thank you very much to Starbucks, one of the sponsors here at Alaska Airlines Arena as Washington continues to roll offensively. Still hitting 340 for the match as they take the 9-6 lead and Oregon forced to take a timeout. Great job by Howry, keeping that one out of the net, the setter for Washington. Now Collier out of the back. And one of the Ducks over the net from the back row. So Washington will take the point and a four-point lead. Yeah, they're going to try to rely on their best players right now. Collier's going to get some swings, probably more in the back row as well. Fortunately, steps on the line there. That time, Barton puts too much on it for the service error. And I think Oregon's still trying to find their rhythm right now offensively, a function of passing, but also just being able to keep the speed, get those hitters high and fast. We'll see if they can get it together here. Martin with a nice pass. And now up to Fletcher. She's been a spark for Washington. Kim Fletcher with five kills. Well, Sunday, you can stream women's volleyball on Big Ten Plus when the Huskies head to Los Angeles for a marquee matchup with USC. It's one of the thousands of non-televised live events across the Big Ten. You can see this season on Big Ten Plus. Subscribe right now at BigTenPlus.com. Great stab at that by Howry to keep it alive, but Washington can't handle it, and Oregon will take the point. And Obete is so fun to watch. She seems like one of those hitters you love to set. They jump and then they just keep going up, up, up. <laughs> she does. She hits that high and deep. Great shot by her. Yeah, she's got some springs at five foot ten, playing on the outside. And the ace. It's interesting you see Oregon kind of picking on that one seam over there. Even though that's Lauren Bay's, their libero, probably the best passer there attacking that thing. Well, that thing curved. That was a beautiful serve with some spice to it. That one into the net, but Oabete with three aces already in this match. It's interesting, both sides are kind of switching from three passers to two passers, and oftentimes as a server, you're trying to attack space. You'd think it'd be easier with two, but sometimes you're, it's so different that you just end up serving right at them or, or making error. Lefty Glover, block touches it. Ooh, big swing by Bush, great dig from Klein. And in the touch, tooling the block, well done by Glover. Yeah, great edge swing by Glover. I'd love to see Oregon get her more involved as, we, as they go here. I think they're gonna need her to really open up, let that offense breathe. Glover averages over two kills a set, hitting 231 this season, but was really good last week at 417 versus Maryland and Rutgers. Bush with the tip, uh, really good up by Wilson. Triple block set, and then pops over the top of the net. That triple block, it looks really intimidating. When you're out of system, Oregon puts those three blockers up. Yeah, it's not as common in women's volleyball. I love how aggressive Oregon is defensively here. They're physical enough to go do it. And you'll see Glover pulled her hands at the last second, thinking that Bush is going to go high hands. And that's a little cat and mouse game between hitter and blocker. Klein was like, why'd you pull the block yeah, down? I just. <laughs> Inslee with the dig. Another big block set by Oregon. Ah, the Husky block sniffs out the tip and gets up Wessels and Martin combined. Yeah, good discipline by Wessels here in transition, just being patient, 
at her base position and makes a read on that inside set and go and gets it. Katie Wessels, really good athlete, 6'2 sophomore out of Lewiston, Idaho, was a three-sport star in high school. Uh, quick, out of the middle, pretty execution by Oregon's offense. It's nice when Oregon's getting those middles high, they're able to hit with some range. They're getting in trouble when that set's a little bit lower, but great set by Klein there. So Oni Ofebu now with five kills to lead all Oregon swingers. And it's Kirsten Barton for Washington. The Huskies with a three-point lead. They took set one, 25-21. Barton just mishit that one into the net on her side. One of the few errors for Barton on her 18 swings. Haley McClellan, career high of four aces at Iowa earlier this season. Goes at Zoria Hurd, who handles it. Out of the middle, wrestles. So again, both teams finding some success out of the middle. Hunt and Wessels for Washington. Oh, what a great run by Wilson. Middles and trans of Fobu doesn't quite know what to do. She's, she's jumping all over and we take advantage in the middle. Great job by Washington. Yeah, Fobu has been really good for Oregon offensively. Collier, yeah, late touch by Hurd. And Boy, that ball just sounds different when Collier gets a swing on it. It's a loud thump. Big 10 volleyball, baby. She's got an arm out there. Love to see her getting after it. And she can absolutely take over a match and dominate. Five kills on 12 swings for the junior outside hitter for the Ducks. Barton. That one's on the line. Again, Barton finding on that one. Finding where the defense is and hitting around over and through it. You know, it's kind of fun when there's such big pins. You know, one outside hitter gets a big swing and then we give it to the other one. It's just a, it's a battle right now. And I love that both these outside hitters are taking great cuts and going for it. And she loved that one. Turning her body in the air to go line. It was well done. Klein tracks down the Aaron pass. No touch. Sales. Long for the four-point Washington lead. So they have been able to keep Oregon at bay. Washington still hitting over 300 at 328. Oregon hitting just 204 here through a set and a half. Call your roll shot. Bays had to dive to keep that one up. On the slide, Bird right up to the net and Obete says, I will take that. Thank you very much. Yeah, great read by Obete. Some of those overpasses, if they're coming right at you, it's actually hard to read the depth. So it takes some discipline. You got to be patient and then go get the thing. And she definitely went and got it. Pulls Oregon to within three. Fletcher with the touch. Fletcher in her first year at Washington. Those first four years in South Carolina, she was their leading hitter last year with 245 kills, hit 266. She's taking it coast to coast. She's coming, I mean, you talk about coast to coast from the port of Spain in Trinidad and Tobago, which is just north of Venezuela. Long way from home, good hustle play. Barton has been getting the kills, that time getting the dig, and Oregon with the point though. They go right at the heart of Washington's defense and find floor. Love to see both teams just getting after it, laying out. Incredible hustle from the Huskies and the, the Ducks just take advantage of this free ball. I love the competitive nature of Klein. She's competing right now, getting after it. She said, I can do this. And the 5'11 redshirt freshman, she's come a long way from home too, all the way from Stanfield, North Carolina. And after the momentum play by Oregon on the dump by Klein, it's Washington coming right back with another kill by Hunt. 
Great swing by Hunt. She does a great job of staying off the net, which is a little bit counterintuitive, but the best middles in the world stay behind the ball so they can go hit with some angles. Glover, that one touching the back line. Perfect placement by Glover. She's got three kills now for Oregon. It's starting to heat up here in set two. Great shot by her. I love setting lefty opposites. It's just a little bit easier to play fast. You can, you know, play with a lot of range. And look at how high she gets. What an athlete. Woo. Out of the middle, Wessels blocked there. And the hands up is Mia Taverdi, 6'1 freshman. Timed that one perfectly. He said, see it and go get it. Coming off the bench to be a game changer. What a great read. You don't have to be too high all the time. Sometimes you just got to take up a little bit of space. Oh, the block there on the line. Well done by the Oregon defense. That is a powerful swing by Inslee, and they used it against her. Talk about some momentum coming in, getting two blocks early to help your team. Leslie Gabriel. Coach Tui and the ace. So Oregon has fought back to tie things up here in set two. Washington took set one, and the Ducks are on a roll. We are all tied up in set two here. A battle of the Northwest, both teams playing well. 19-19. Know each other well. Just about a five hour drive down I-5 between Seattle and Eugene. Fletcher with the swing. The block for Oregon has been impressive here in set two to rally and now take the lead. Oregon on a 5-0 scoring run and they are first to 20 here in set two. Now, Oregon making a, a big momentum shift with their serve and block and defense. They're putting a lot of pressure on the Huskies who can't quite stay in rhythm right now. So a little bit of time out for some perspiration on the floor and we also will have a challenge. These two 16 win teams going out. The original call was ball in, point Oregon. Washington is challenging like that there was a net on the play. With our referee, Sergio Gonzalez. But the ball was called in, and we're going to challenge whether or not it was in and out. So Leslie Tuiasosopo, Gabriel. If you think back to 2001, what were you doing in 2001, Courtney Thompson? Oh just getting into high school, I think. That is how long Leslie Gabriel has been with the Washington volleyball program. Before that, she was a player in the late 90s. She is a Husky legend. She will challenge this. Truly, the Tuyasasopo family is really embodies kind of the essence of everything great about the University of Washington. And Coach Gabriel, has been such a foundational part of this program for so long. It's cool to see her take the lead here as a, as a head coach. Yeah, you mentioned it. it. She is part of the first family of Husky Athletics. Of course, her oh, her younger brother, Marcus Tubiasa Sopo, the Rose Bowl winning quarterback for Washington. Trivia question, Washington played Purdue in that Rose Bowl. Who was the quarterback for Purdue that Marcus Tuiasa Supo beat? No way, was it Drew Brees? It was. No way. Adam way. way to know your oh, trivia. Yeah. I love me some football. And so we're looking here. Oh, it looks like she got it. Washington challenging if Oregon hit the net. You see that The ball is going to be reversed. The point is going towards Washington. It was a net violation on number three. Washington keeps their challenge. So a good challenge by Leslie Gabriel. And they will keep their challenge. In college women's volleyball, you get two challenges per match. If you are unsuccessful, you lose a challenge. If you are successful, you get to retain. So a good challenge by Coach Tui. 
And now Washington is the first to 20. That is a huge momentum play as Oregon had been on a five to nothing scoring run. And a big time swing for Oregon. That's one of their best first ball set outs of the second set, I think. Super clean pass on a tough serve. Klein does a great job of keeping Glover in rhythm. You gotta love seeing that down the stretch of here, though. Glover up to four kills now on 10 swings. Washington's offense quieter in set two, hitting just 194. Oregon in set two, hitting 188. So both teams' blocks really, I think, have been pretty effective. Yeah, absolutely. Starts with the serve and then making sure you're making that discipline read, going to get that thing. So our referee, Sergio Gonzalez, over at the scoring table, conferring. So looking at a potential lineup check and rotation. It was nice to make sure you have the right server back there, especially after these challenges that are oftentimes challenging because they take so long. <laughs> well, in the meantime, Kirsten Barton continues to stay warm. So it looks like the rotation was correct, and as we've been keeping our eye on it, 42 in serve received for Washington, and Bayes handles it. Inslee, a little mistimed by her and Wilson. Touch, no touch, so the hitting error by Bush will give Oregon the point, and they take the one-point lead here in set two. It'll be interesting to see here if Molly Wilson goes back to Imani Bush after that error. She might give it back to Inslee, who to try to. Oh, good serve, and Barton couldn't get a good pass off, but Washington scrambles to get it over. Out of the back, Barton. Morris dove to keep it alive, and Collier terminates. Collier said, I'll do it. Now it's crunch time right now, and this is when Mimi Collier tends to get that look in her eye. Yeah, you can see Klein does a great job of keeping speed and transition and let her hit her do the hard, difficult things that she's so great at. Oregon on a 3-0 scoring run. They have taken over here in set two. They trailed by four points earlier. And Bush, you mentioned it, gets set again on the outside and connects. Yeah, if you, again, go back to that fifth set in the, their last matchup, UW wasn't getting great swings in big moments. And you love to see this if you're a Husky. Great hitters take great swings when it counts the most. Amani Bush, the 6'3", fourth year junior, missed all of last season after shoulder surgery. Great to see her back out onto the court. There is Bush right there, good spot, and puts a little velo behind that roll shot for the point, and we are all knotted up at 22 apiece. First one to 25, so who can ever reel off three in a row? And Win by two, I have a feeling this set might go extras, Courtney. Yeah, both sides making a few uncharacteristic errors here late in the set. And I think championship teams, you don't really elevate in these moments. You just do what you've done over time. And the teams that try to do too much or get a little bit down. Well, you saw the balanced attack numbers for Washington, and that has been a real strength And that the defense set in the block doesn't really know where the ball is gonna go. They have numerous hitters who are capable of terminating. In the middle, Washington's block set, the joust. Barton hammers that one good. Morris, the libero, couldn't handle it for Oregon. And out of the timeout, Washington takes the first point. Barton does such a great job of working hard in transition to get off the net, but then starting her approach so slow, slow so she can finish with a lot of speed. Oh. 
Hoyer, my goodness, just rips that one to tie it up at 23. That's about as good as it gets right there. Great pass, keeping the speed to the pins. Collier's got a ton of space to attack between the block. And keeps it high and goes in that deep third, just as she was intending to do. The block was not closed for Collier, and that spells trouble for most opponents. Martin, pass to dig, or excuse me, pass to kill, and gets the kill, and takes the point 24 to 23, and it is set point number one for Washington. So fun to see both teams earning it right now, you know, swinging with great range, great shots, earning their points. Now Barton has been targeted in serve receive, and I think she's handled that well so far in this match. Klein to Collier. Oh, heavy ball, Hurd couldn't handle, and we are back up to 24 all. I feel like she got a little more oomph on that ball here. 23-24, what a rip. Collier, the 6'3 junior out of Lincoln, California, was the national freshman of the year two seasons ago. Bush tried to tip it, couldn't get it over the top of the tape. And Oregon says thank you very much. And now it's Oregon set point number one. It has been a back and forth match here in set two. These two Northwest rivalries getting after it. Hunt, heavy ball, Oregon handles it. And they get set number two. Hunt had been you got a little pressure here and there, probably pressure you're putting on yourself, and it's awesome to see Collier just step into who she is and play at a really high level right now. Way Oregon goes short on the serve, and Washington had to scramble, and then out of the middle, once again, Ofebu able to find the floor. Seems like a key for Oregon. When they're passing well, they're getting their middles to hit high, hit with some range, opens everything else up. So Washington took set one, 25 to 21, and then led in set two for the majority until it was 2019, and then Oregon went on a little run and able to win set two. Barton, the triple block set up, and it trickles down on Oregon's side of the net. Again, one of the unique things that Oregon does is that triple block, and that's really tough. The more blockers there are, obviously that's a lot harder to hit around. Barton just going for it, and it works out for him. Yeah, Coach Tui talking about that triple block, and sometimes you just have to go for high hands into the tip because well, there's not a lot of cover. Glover, no touch, and so that one with too much on it is the hitting error and Washington with the early 2-1 lead in set three. Oh, creative kind of scoop shot over the net by Ufebu. And now Collier, oh my goodness, Ooh. that was a rocket off of the hand of Collier. She's heating up, folks. It is a bit different when she swings, huh? She's got a lot of heat behind that. Hunt with a little off-speed shot, didn't quite connect. Collier takes advantage. Incredible shot down the line. You see how much space she has at the angle. And for her to be patient enough to let that come across her body, that's what great hitters do. Oh, read that beautifully on the block. Oh, Feibu saw Hunt in the middle. Getting after that one and sends it back. Huskies can't find their rhythm quite yet in the middle there. It happens so fast, there's less time for the hitter to adjust, which is why it's a harder connection than in the Kings. Heard. It's the up. Monty Bush having to tip that one over, and Collier gets a little help from the tape, and we'll say, I don't need any help. She is a double-digit kills now with 10. Just trying to take that sharp, maybe a little sharper than she intended, but then that was in her favor there. Oh. 
So 10 kills for Collier for Oregon, 10 kills for Barston, Martin for Washington, and Klein, the setter, getting a good swing on it. As That's every setter in the country just goes crazy. It's always so fun, woohoo! <laughs> Did you ever act cool and be like, I do it all the time, whatever. No, I just never got to do it. I was short. I couldn't really hit. I just <laughs> led vicariously through these amazing sitters. Yeah, you did uh, give daps to all your tremendous hitters. Courtney Thompson, Elise Woodward with you from Seattle in this rivalry match. Oregon has surged ahead here, five to two in set three. Nodded at one set apiece. Out of the back. A miss hit by Wilson, but Washington scrambles to keep it alive. Lauren Bay's good one hand stab to keep it alive, and now Morris flies around. In the middle hunt off hands. And she continues the highly efficient night. Incredible defense by both Morris and Bay's liberos on both sides of the court here. And then I love that Wilson's going back to Hunt. Their connection hasn't been there, but they need it if they want to win this set. I love that she's forcing that to try to figure it out. I think you're absolutely right. They've had success there, but a couple of mistimed swings as well. On the slide, bullet. Wow, impressive by Ofebu. Well, Fabu, what an adjustment. That set was a little bit low. And instead of just tipping it in, she, she sped up a little bit, got it over. Great swing by her. Well, Fabu is six foot three. Matt Ulmer told me she touches 10 11. All right, a basketball hoop is 10 feet tall. <laughs> okay. It's wild. Ability to dunk is what Fabu has over there at six foot three. Fletcher. Nice swing, smart, getting the touch and getting the kill for the Huskies. Huskies are going to need a few more swings, you know, in these longer rallies. Put some pressure on the, the Ducks if they want to make a run here. Barton had a couple of aces earlier in this match. Oh, Fabu. They just keep riding the hot hand. Her and Collier have found that rhythm that they were looking for earlier in this match. Yeah, it's so great when you can move your middle around behind. You know, you see her sometimes hitting at the pin. She'll move it inside. It's a lot for a block to have to manage on a play that especially is really fast. So Oregon Ducks ranked number 10 in the nation. Washington was up to number 24 as Fletcher finds the floor on the outside. Great Washington. rhythm there by Howery. Getting Fletcher a nice swing, a little bit off the net. Sometimes with a right-handed opposite hitter, that's not an easy angle. But Fletcher does a great job of staying off, staying behind the ball. Popped up and Washington can't keep it alive. Smart play by Oregon. On the joust to push it deep past the cover. Great hustle by Washington. Always tough when you work that hard and then you can't quite execute getting it back. So Oregon takes the three point advantage on the Huskies home floor. Service pressure by Oregon. Inslee blocked but keeps it alive. Inslee pounds it off of the block for the kill. Maddie Inslee with six kills. The redshirt senior. Been around UW for a long time. She was back a part of the Final Four squad. She was third on the team in kills back when they made the Final Four when she was a true freshman. Glover takes kind of a wide angle with the lefty and just never really got to where she needed to go on that swing. Now it's always tough as a hitter on these plays that maybe the set's a little off or it's a little bit wonky because of that first contact, knowing you want to be aggressive, but also 
We want to put pressure on Washington by making them play. Great dig by Collier, having to go to the deck after that serve hit the tape. Inslee hammers another one right through that block and down. I mean, when you say heavy ball, that is Maddie Inslee. Yeah, she's got an amazing arm. And one thing you'll notice, occasionally Wilson will leave her a little bit more inside than other times. And I think that's intentional because she is she has the ability to get on it so fast and hit that angle, it's tough to defend. Out of the back, Collier, none better out of the back, in my opinion. And Amazing swing middle. and such an advantage of the offense. You have three attackers up front and then you can use someone in the back row. Look at all this space she has to attack. Great job by the Ducks. And not only does she bring the velocity, but able to find that seam in the Husky defense. Collier, block is there for Washington. And that one pushed by Wessels, they say touch. This time, no hesitation by Leslie Gabriel. She will challenge this for the touch. There's a lot of conviction in that challenge. Now, it's so hard to see when you're on the sideline like Coach Tui. Some of the times when you're playing, you can hear it more than even just something the you notice call is, is ball out point Oregon. Washington is challenging that there was a touch on the play. Sergio Gonzalez, our referee two, over there in charge of the replays. Oh, that looks pretty clean as a touch. I think I got, got her. the left pinky on the yeah, left hand. Yeah, we got hand. that left pinky. I think you see that left pinky move. Yeah. by Washington, everybody putting their hand in the air. This one will be overturned and we will be tied up. It is 10-8 Oregon. And that pinky clearly moving as that ball passes over. Not only shows you the challenge, but also why there's so many broken fingers involved. <laughs> there's a lot of ways that pinky can go. I mean, as a former Hooper, I feel that pain. <laughs> I, I still have some mangled knuckles because of that. Upon further review, the, the call is going to be reversed. There was a touch on the Oregon. Washington retains their challenge. So two challenges and two reversals for Coach Gabriel and UW. And so he will be all tied up at night. The student you're loving that. Fun to see the moment when they realize, oh, we got it. It worked. Getting all fired up there in the student section, part of the dog pack here. Wonderful crowd out here to take in this rivalry matchup between Washington and Oregon. Oh, very smart by Glover, but I think just wide. They said that Oregon and Leslie Gabriel going immediately back and asking for the challenge. She's been successful two out of two challenges. Right, she's hitting the thousand right now. I just want to get it. I don't blame her. The original, the original call was ball out point, uh, ball in point Oregon. Washington is challenging that all was out. That was right in front of Coach Gabriel, who, as we meant, you said she's hitting three for three. I mean, she was a heck of a player here at Washington. Fierce competitor. Let's see, does this ball land out? Hard to tell on that angle. It is tough to see from here. Yeah, it's tough to see through the traffic of Husky defenders. This should be a pretty clear angle. Oh, uh, that's tough. Ooh. Well, when the volleyball hits, it yeah. fans out, but oh, that's a if tough, you can see any white. Tough angle. They don't quite see yeah. blue there. Yeah, in 
So I think to overturn it, if that's the only angle that our referee crew is given, and you can't see anything on that particular angle, at least I can't. Well, maybe you can see that it does clip that white. I think they're going to have to call that in. I think that this call will stand just because there is not evidence to overturn it. Upon further review, the original call is going to stand. Washington loses their challenge, Point Oregon. Got it. So now, two we hit and two for three, batting six, 66. That's Oregon. We'll send it back to Mackenzie Morris, their libero. Fifth year senior out of Frisco, Texas, started her career at Kansas State as Coach Tui talking with our referee two here today, Sergio Gonzalez. There is Morris. Look so impressed with Morris tonight. Flying around, making great plays, making difficult plays look simple. It's a sign of a great libero. She's got 14 digs. Lauren Bay is for Washington, has 15. They've both been really effective as Washington will get the point on the net violation. Her challenge needed on that one. Oregon getting a little bit excited to go make a huge block move. Unfortunately, it did that in the net. Kenny Wessels, a native of Lewiston, Idaho. Glover. Oh, great up by Wilson. That was a hammer that she handled. Oh, <laughs> No up on the Collier swing. Now Glover takes a rip at this ball. Heavy arm, Wilson makes a great dig. Gives her team a chance. And then here comes Oregon. Impressed with Klein on this ball. That's a free ball they should take advantage of. And that's not an easy over the back bump set. Giving it to the Mimi Collier. Now she hits as hard as anyone with great range. Big time power arm for Mimi Collier. Her mom was an All American at Long Beach State and led the nation in hitting percentage back in 1997. Hit 428. So she's got a little family, family lineage that she's got to live up to, right? Get any hot tips there? On the <laughs> well, her dad was an All-American on the Long Beach water polo team, so yeah, really athletic family for Mimi Collier. As the Ducks have this two-point lead, Bush going cross court and dug up nicely by McClellan. The block there, but out. So the two of Washington will take it. High swing, Orban makes a nice physical move, but that hand might just be facing towards the outside of the court rather than inside. It's hard when you're moving to the right and then you gotta you push back to the left, so it's it takes some discipline. Alexis Howry averaging just under five assists per set in the 6-2 system. Martin tips and wide. This connection there for Washington's offense. Boy, we have been back and forth here in this rivalry series. It went five in Eugene a couple of weeks ago. And now as we sit 13-11, Oregon advantage. Total points won today, 60-60. Not it up. There are no little things. And of course, the match tied at one set apiece. Big hammer there. Howry to Hunt, nice rhythm there. Both sides, their offense totally opens up and breathes when we can get those middle kills. Even if it's in the back row, having an attack in that middle third of the court really puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Julia Hunt up to seven kills, the native of Covington, Kentucky. Uh, just hit the top of the tape and bounces back for Barton. I grew up in Covington, Washington. Every time you say Covington, I know. I'm like, yes! Okay, not quite, but that's all right. I think you need to have that conversation with her. Yeah, that's right. Oh, come on. There's a couple of different Covingtons. Over 2,000 miles to get down to Covington, Kentucky, a suburb of Cincinnati, Ohio. 
in the middle. There's Hunt. Uh, she really has good body control when she gets up in the air. That time, she really had to shift to go to her left. Yeah, Oregon's in a pretty tight bunch, but you see there's still so much space for Hunt to hit in that exact middle of the court because the pass took him there. It's tough to defend. She will rotate off in this 6-2 system. More hitters coming on. Triple block for Washington. Oh, put over in the Husky defense, scrambling. The block there handled the cover by Collier. Oabete dug up by Barton. Bays gets it up. Now Maddie will take a rip and Collier's there. Long rally finished with the Husky block. Pushing up and over in a momentum play to tie things up with the crowd loving that rally. Wessels and Fletcher putting an absolute wall up in transition. Discipline to get back to base. Great read, physical move. Well, catch your breath. You can see a few hands on hips right now after that rally. That was a long one. Ooh, hanging up there. Mia Tverdi, the 6'1 freshman middle. Oregon, though, with a one-point advantage, 15 to 14 here in set three, the 10th ranked team in America. Lost six starters off last year's team. The only returner, Mingi Collier. And yet here they are, ranked 10th in America. Matt Ulmer doing a fabulous job as head coach of the Ducks in his eighth year. Back-to-back -back Elite Eight appearances for Ulmer and the Ducks. And tooling the block is Oabete. Oabete again taking advantage of those Washington hands pointing outside the court. Klein, who missed the last match with injury, didn't start tonight, but has played a significant role. Wessels out of the middle with the kill. I think this set's going to come down to which team is putting more service pressure on. Both sides doing a good job getting their middles involved when the pass allows them to. Even with two people helping, Wessels finds some space. Yeah, it was well done by Wessels. The block set up to her left and contorted her body to get that swing off to the right with an angle. Out of the middle, sharp hit to the floor by Tiverti. She's Ooh. really been a spark off the bench for Oregon. How fun. Freshman, number 10 team in the country coming off the bench to make a difference. Incredible space. What an arm on Tiverti. She is out of La Vista, Nebraska. Had a really nice match at Iowa with a career high seven kills and six blocks. service error in this match between these two teams. So Maddie Inslee. That puts that big arm to use as a server. 16 aces, just 19 service errors make it 20. That one sails just long for Inslee. Service errors are even tonight. Six each team. Seven now for the Huskies. This was a, a big differentiator in the last matchup between these guys. So Oregon, a two-point advantage, 18-16. Wessels in the middle. Hunt and Wessels have had some nice moments. Great rhythm by those two. Molly coming back on the court, getting her middles involved. This is something obviously the Huskies are trying to do as a system. They're attacking something in the Oregon block there. Time just one blocker up in the middle against Wessels and able to get another kill. Off the tape and down, the Glover. Scooting that one over the top for the termination. And Sometimes you'll take a little luck. That's right. Nice shot by her. That's an off play. They're kind of out of rhythm. Klein's working hard. Instead of making an air, she keeps it in, gives her team a chance. And it works out. 
keep it in the square and good things happen. Going at Barton again, she handles it. Now transitions for the swing. In the middle, Hunt smacks it. Defense there for Oregon. Wide to Bush, uh, pretty dig by Owabete. In the middle, Hunt tools the block. Long rally terminated by Hunt and the Huskies. Great play on both sides of the ball. Morris flying around for Oregon. Washington able to create some digs high enough in the middle of the court where their center can still run quick. It's a Julia, great play in transition. Julia, the Gatorade player of the year in the state of Kentucky as a senior, very highly regarded recruit. On the slide. Good swing by Ofebu. That's an impressive play. That pass is pretty far off the net, about 12 feet. Finds running forward and she flies it in there. Ofebu stays behind the ball enough to be able to see the angle. Ofebu redshirted last year at Oregon. But before that, she was at UC Irvine and was two-time Big West first-team player. Service pressure applied, and Oregon, a big serve there to take a three-point lead, 21 to 18. It has been back and forth. This is the largest lead of the third set for Oregon. Spins like Glover. She's one of many weapons for Oregon, which you might not get as many swings, but you're also not going to see as much defensive pressure. And she's definitely cashing in here against Washington, up to nine kills. Nice dig by Morris. Barton started red hot and gets that kill here in set number three to pull the Huskies to within two. You mentioned that danger red zone, and the Huskies are in it. Man, it is tough to get a kill on these Oregon Ducks. Morris is leading the way here. But the Huskies and Barton just staying aggressive, finding a way, not the first time, but keep going. I love the spirit that she plays with, taking great cuts. And Klein, the setter, was able to reach up on the block and slow that thing down. Just not quite enough. Heavy ball. Can Bush get there? No. Wow, what a swing. Impressive. And Oregon again leads by three. That's kind of a classic Oregon play. An in-system, a nice pass. They're playing with a ton of speed, so that hitter has one-on-one -on -one at the pin, which is a good night here in the Big Ten. Look at Oabete just ooh, hanging in the air. Monty Bush could not catch up to that. And now real danger zone. 22 to 19. Oregon with the lead. And Oregon into the net. It looked like it was going to be Washington scrambling to stay out of the net on that play. But it's Oregon who clips it. And Washington will get the side out. And Lauren Bays, who has a lot of different serves that she can utilize. We'll be back there for Washington and needs to go on a bit of a run. Block, but out. And so Oabete will add to her kill total. Impressive job by Daly McClendon coming in. Just really sound passing in the back row. Again, down the stretch especially, that's, the, that's what makes a difference. So the redshirt freshman Klein serving for Oregon. Fletcher, no touch wide, and now Oregon it will have set point number one. We're all tied up, one set apiece. Washington dominated in set one at times, especially in terms of hitting percentage. And then Oregon came back late in set two and nearly an ace to end that here in set three. The Huskies alive for now. Oh, another beautiful up. The defense scrambling. And Glover ends it. 
The lefty hanging and firing. There's long history of tradition here at the University of Washington. Five Final Fours. 2020 is the last time that Washington able to get to the Final Four. Seven Pac-12 championships, as well as finishing as Pac-12 runners up. And new history to be made in the Big Ten Conference for both Oregon and Washington. And using the block is Q Fletcher. So good start for Washington here in set four to take the 2 nothing early lead. Yeah, I love Howry coming out here with an ace. They're getting her opposite going in transition. She's playing really aggressively as a setter. It's fun to watch. up on Collier, thumping off of it. Good block cover, well done by Washington's defense. There's just something about a block. You know, I didn't get very many in my career, but <laughs> you know, the other people that are up there go get the thing, it's just such a, no, no, this is our point. Nice momentum shift for the Huskies. They got the block on Collier, who has had some moments of looking unstoppable. 12 kills, just one error for Collier. A high tip by Glover. And now out of the middle, Hunt touches the tape. Collier terminates. Classic Oregon speed. Collier's got a lot of space to hit. One thing that I, I'm really impressed with is you know, she's able to cut that off and go angle and also, again, wait and take that down the line. Great players play with great range, and she's doing an awesome job of it. ABC, a All-American honorable mention last year for Collier as the service error into the net. Washington takes the 4-1 advantage. Martin was red hot in set one, and has carried that on 13 kills. Just four errors for Barton, the sophomore. Collier having to adjust that swing. Now Inslee and hits it off high hands. Very smart by Inslee. That's a big time play. Lauren Bay's taking a chance. That ball's a little bit tight, which I think the Huskies are okay with. And Inslee makes just a veteran play. She's way under that. Huge Oregon block and just goes from low to high, hitting those high hands. An amazing swing. As here we are in set four. Washington pops out to the 5 1 lead here in set four. Trailing two sets to one. These two teams met a couple of weeks ago in Eugene, and it was a five set thriller. And nothing says it won't be like that here in Seattle. Another point added on to Seattle in the net for two. Dub rather on the net violation. Huskies coming out aggressive in set four, but the mark of a great team is how they respond. Oregon's down five, but I wouldn't be surprised if they make a, a nice push here to get back in this thing. They certainly did on their home floor in Eugene. Glover right at Barton. Right in the kitchen. Nice swing by Glover. Might knock the wind out of you right to the gut of Barton. And so Glover able to put an end to the Washington scoring run. Washington led two sets to one in Eugene before Oregon rallied. They led 10 to five in set five and 12 to nine. And Oregon reeled off six points in a row to end it in set five in Eugene. So no matter what you look up and see the scoreboard, Oregon is not out of it, as proven earlier this season. Lauren Bays has been flying around defensively. 18 digs for the Huskies. Hinsley in the area, and it, it was Ofebu with the hitting error. One of the reasons that's a difficult play in this rotation Rotation four is a fabu has got to come all the way around. You see she's only seven feet off the net and she's got to get deeper so she can stay behind that ball. It's not easy. Bay is looking for the back line. 
Sales on her, and so Mimi Collier will take it. With that big swing. She has tweaked her serve. Going from a two-hand toss to a one-hand toss, she was piling up the service errors earlier in the season, but this seems to have helped her find her rhythm. Wessels hanging, couldn't quite thump it. Nice dig by Barton. Inslee, Woo! that was a missile from the left. Great swing by Inslee. Howry does a nice job in transition to read this, get under it, keep some speed to the pin, and Ensley does what she does, finds some space, and brings the heat. Howry, the true freshman setter. What have you made from her today? Man, I love how she's competing, and she's really disciplined in her movements. So there's not a lot of extra foot movements. She waits to see where the ball goes. She gets to it efficiently, and obviously she's pretty quick, so it's awesome to see how she's playing. And she, and Always out of a setter on both sides tonight. They're, they're doing a great job, but it's just fun to watch setters that play with conviction and go for it, and you're going to make some errors, and you just keep going. Continues the long line of outstanding Husky setters. Of course, Leslie Gabriel, part of the coaching staff since 2001, has helped grow, uh, grow many of them, including you. Service error will head it back over to Washington in a 10-4 lead. I can't say enough, enough good things about Coach Gabriel. And now she shows up, cares about her players, loves the game of volleyball, always fighting to find that extra, extra way to make her team the best they can be. Oh, that's a huge play by Washington's defense. Bush and Wessels up at the net. Read out that attack by Collier big time as they give Washington the big lead here in set four. Amazing swing out of the back row, but there was a block right there. The Huskies are up 11 4. Trying to come from the two set to one deficit and knock off Oregon. They are looking for their first ranked win of the season. They are 0 2. They built a 16 4 record. 16 and 3 this season. All three of the Ducks' losses this year have been to ranked foes. They lost at number three, Penn State, and at number nine, Wisconsin, in Big Ten play. And then they started the season all the way back in August with the loss against number four, Pitt. Wessels tooling the block, and Washington just continues to roll here in set four. Momentum sometimes can just really urge you on, or is there something specifically that Washington is taking advantage of? Yeah, well, they're just, their first two contacts are so great right now. They're hitting 750 in this set, which is kind of unheard of. <laughs> and getting the roll off of the top of the tape for the ace by Wessels. Such a game of momentum, and Washington's feeling it now. All the balls flying their way. Nice to get a little luck every once in a while. You're working that hard. Wessels will take it. The ace for the sophomore middle. Oh, the block. Hunt and Barton sniffing that out and rejecting. Now, something Coach Gabriel takes some pride in is a block. She was a middle blocker here, a legendary one. And the Huskies are so disciplined here. Tiverti's been hot, so they're reading her. They're seeing that set and make a great, great read to get two blockers in front of her. Julia Hunt, number two for the Huskies. Very impressive as a true freshman. Glover with a high tip in the cover. Not in time. Put a lot of air underneath that, but Washington's defense still could not close. That's interesting because great opposites do a nice job of knowing when the middle's serving because that means the middle's playing left back defense. So typically you might see an outside hitter, a libero there, and we love our middles, but they're not the best defenders in the world, you know? They're up at the net for a reason. <laughs> Ducks take advantage. That's a great call. Barton. Boy, contorting her swing to send that to the right when her body was facing to the left. This is your style. Hoopster, that was like a fadeaway. Yeah. Fadeaway three. 
She comes inside to pass that ball, and she's moving outside. It's a tough swing and keeps it high. You are absolutely right. That's a fadeaway jumper on the baseline right there. She hit it. We just didn't get the back pedal. <laughs> Tell her to work on that. <laughs> work on the selling. There's Barton, and the roll shot hits the floor. Great spot by Barton. A 10-point Husky advantage here in set four. Yeah, the Ducks defensively, when it's out of system, tend to do more of a, a rotate or read, maybe a little bit of a hybrid, but Klein comes up to defend that tip. Huskies do a nice job of finding space, kind of middle third of the court. So Howry, the 5'10 freshman, Silverton, Oregon, her hometown, Atlanta Pops. Popping up defensively is Hunt and Barton again with the big block. Big swing, big block. Barton does a nice job of reading and then going straight up where she sees this set. Washington just absolutely cruising here in set four. Coming out with a vengeance after Oregon took the two sets to one lead and an ace. And the dogs piling on to this big lead. You know, it's something as a number 10 team in the country, you're always trying to unlock something new. How good can we get? And even if the Ducks don't come back and win this set, it's these moments where you really learn about yourself. If they can stay in it, not kind of go, all right, we're going to go to five, you know, but stay in it, keep trying to find their rhythm. Three aces by Howry. Good dig by Zoria Hurd. And now the tip by Barton. Everything rolling Washington's way. Howry back to the service line again. Extremely bright true freshman. Wants to pursue pre-med as Matt Ulmer looks on. And Howery finally puts one into the net. What a roll by Howery at the service line and by Washington offense. They're hitting 8-18 in set four. Remarkable. Dig by Hurd, stabbing that one, keeping it alive. All the way out to Collier, and she hits it off the block for the point. First shy with a bump set, that's not an easy one. Throws it up there, gives Collier a chance. So Collier with 14 kills, just two hitting errors on 20, or excuse me, on 33 attacks. Fletcher, ah, just mistimed that one, a, a misconnection. Running out of room as that one into the net. A rare error for Washington as they have built a 10-point lead in set four. Barton hammers that one and running out of real estate is Oabete. That's also by Oabete. Love how hard she goes, especially in the back row there. Barton's so taking some swings right now, you know. Yeah, she's she's taking some rips, up to 17 kills to lead all players here in this match. Oh my goodness! How high was Ofepu on that swing? That <laughs> I think her hip was hitting the top of the tape. <laughs> Great swing, a nice high set by Pershai. Wow. We just need some like Sarah McLaughlin music to play over that. We don't even need to say anyone. Maddie Inslee dug up nicely by Morris. Oh, the block able to slow down Collier, but so much power it goes out of bounds on the other side of the court. That's when you know you got a good arm. Ball goes out the other side. As you said, in Oregon, you know, earning some points here, I think that's important. Again, even if they don't win this set, it's kind of find their rhythm. 
Yeah, they do not want to go into set five. First to 15, reeling from set four. Nice stab dig, but falls into the net. Good attempt by McClellan. By Washington, again, leading by 10, 21-11. We expected this to be a competitive match. We have certainly been treated to some high-level plays here between 10th-ranked Oregon and Washington, who rose as high as 24 in the ace by Bays. Hitting that tape and falling in. Is everything going the Huskies' way right now? Lauren Bays, she's been mixing up the depth of her serve, short and long, trying to put some pressure on the Ducks. Nine aces by the Washington Huskies to seven for Oregon. Big block again, tooled by Collier. Just hammers it in there for the point. Yeah, just really overpowering on those swings out there. Wessel's having a hard time moving that quickly and then getting those hands back into the court. Barton. Laying out, can't get underneath that one, and the ace by Collier. It's really been a clean game in terms of service. Eight aces for Oregon to just eight errors. Nine aces for Washington to just nine errors. You'll take matching numbers in those two categories all night long. Absolutely. And interesting, both, you know, we've talked about this with passing lanes, and a lot of them are passing with two. Again, Barton having to lay out and back-to-back -back aces for Mimi Collier. I think that's been the difference. When they're able to attack space and make those passers move, we've seen Barton have to go to the middle of the court a few times, especially if she's front row outside hitter. That's a really tough move. Something about end of sets and Collier back in the circle. Every match matters in a conference at this level. Out of the timeout. Oregon on a 3-0 scoring run and stopped with the swing on the outside. From Fletcher. And I think whatever team is first ball side out percentage at a higher level right now is going to take this match. Nice clean side out by the Huskies. So the Huskies jumping out to a big 10 4 lead to start set four and then just have kept Oregon at bay. A couple of points away from sending this one the distance. <laughs> I tell you, she has been electric. The slide that time to perfection. Such a fun player to watch. Again, a nice clean FBSO by Oregon there to respond. 11 kills for Oni Ofebu now. A transfer from UC Irvine, redshirted last year. last season of collegiate volleyball is a major player for this 10th ranked team in America. Lock set up. This time it's Bush. And the diving attempt by the DS. Maya de los Reyes can't catch up and it will be Set point number one for Washington. Washington had a set point that Oregon fought off. And then Oregon came back to win in set two. Oof, that was a good looking swing. Smacking that one. Solovete. Taking that hard angle, <laughs> getting on top of the ball, getting it early, going to get that thing. What an arm. I don't think she really likes the scoreboard right now. She looks a little bit irritated. I don't blame her. Like the fight, Oregon. Bush. And that will do it. Set number four. And teams the first time to play two five-setters.
since all the way back in 1989. And I don't even think Courtney was alive That's in 1989. Been at it a while here. And Oregon starts with the service error, a rare miscue from the service line. How reset the tone in, in set four, coming in to serve, getting on a run, and then leading her team to some nice swings offensively. Of course, every point magnified here, first to 15. Howry, true freshman, joust at the net. And a net violation, Matt Ulmer not happy. Asking for a clarification. That's a tough call in those, those overpasses that are tight. For those passes that are tight. The middle is not allowed to hit the ball unless it crosses the plane. So Howry. Goes at Obete, who handles it. Glover leans, fires, and dug up by Bays. Collier, Zoria Hurd with a good dig. Collier goes tip, Barton covers. Back to Fletcher, covered by Bays. Another good dig by Morris. Long rally. Hunt hammers it. Julia Hunt, a true freshman. Wow. Amazing defensive plays on both sides of the net, but Bay's flying around everywhere, giving her team a chance. That is a tough dig. A 21 dig performance so far from Lauren Bays, the senior libero for Washington. The Huskies lead 3-0. Ranks Oregon, number 12 in the RPI. Washington, who was as high as 24 in the rankings. Their RPI right now, 31. So a big match in terms of postseason seedings. And Howry, a little frustrated with herself out of the timeout, puts it into the net. These two teams, boy, this definitely looks like two teams that will be playing in the postseason. So much talent in the Big Ten Conference. Hits the tape, good cover by Howry. On the slide, Red Bays again gets there. Howry, brilliant to get there and keep that play alive. Collier didn't get all of it. Barton hits the line, and this crowd rises to their feet as Washington with the early 4-1 lead in the fifth. Incredible work by Barton to hustle off the net and transition, create a swing for herself. She takes that down the line. That's a tough angle. She oh, paints the sideline. She is fired up. You love to see that emotion. A sophomore out of Chandler, Arizona. And another tough serve delivered by the Washington Huskies. Barton. It's a great serve. And you know, you talked about the, the conference in, in general. And I think we talked to the Oregon staff about how helpful it is to play so many great matches in the regular season. We don't have to wait till a postseason to see a Wisconsin or Nebraska. We're getting all these moments. And this match is another one where this is the good stuff. Barton. Going for that back line, too much on it. And so Oregon pulls to within three. First to 15 here in set five. Remember, Washington led 10-5 and 12-9 in set five in Eugene, but Oregon rallied back. The dig by Howry, the setter. And Fletcher gets the touch and the kill. Fletcher's taking a lot of big swings in transition over there. Fletcher, one of four Husky hitters in double digits in terms of kills. 18 for Barton, 12 for both Hunt and Fletcher. And Matty Inslee with 10. Bays goes at Ofebu. And now she will rise, tip it. Fletcher dives down for the dig. Block is there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Feibu 
and Obete were so high up for that block and sent it down. I love that. They came in for the triple, and then Obete hustles back all the way to the pin and says, no, no, not today. I mean, she cut that in oh, and cut that it in back. Through it. Ooh, she timed that up. High-level defense by the Ducks on that play. Wessels out of the middle. Touch. Washington will take it. 7-3, Washington with the four-point advantage. Great job by Howry, keeping their middles involved. It's easy, especially in a fifth set, to kind of just throw it to pins. And so Matt Ulmer will challenge the touch. It was tough to see in live action whether or not the original decision on the court was net violation. Oregon is challenging that there was no net. Oh, okay. Challenging a net violation. I thought for sure they were challenging a touch. Yeah. Let's but take a look on the replay. The touch. Oh, there's clearly a net. And an the original so. decision on the court is going to be confirmed. Point Washington, Oregon yeah. loses the challenge. They're down to one. Yeah, good job by the officiating crew here getting to that quickly. That was obviously a net violation. And so Washington will take that 7 3 advantage. And really, I think for Matt Ulmer, you could challenge something like that. It's just a way for him to huddle up with his team. It does burn a timeout and it does burn a challenge, but um, he still has a challenge left. And I see a little break and reset in the action here for the Ducks. Still trying to kind of find their rhythm after that set four. Now Washington looking for their first win against a ranked opponent this year. They are 0-2. Oh, Collier heavy ball dug up by Bayes. She has been outstanding defensively. And that dig by Washington is wide. Bay's keeping that play alive for her team, up to 23 digs, but it all started with that Collier hammer. What a match here in Seattle. Set five, Washington with a three-point advantage. Inslee goes tip, covered. Collier. Blocked, and then two touches in a row. What a block set up. Again, the big thump by Collier into the block. I'm so impressed with Wessel's discipline at the net. You know, you have three attackers, you got one in the back row. That's a lot of people to manage, a lot of distractions. And for her to just read the set and go get that thing, it's a great play by her. Washington, the first one to eight here in set five as we change sides of the court. So we will see if Washington was in this position before in set five. Can they close it out? You have to think that Oregon believes, even down by four, getting doubled up, that they are alive after what they were able to do in Eugene. Kristen Barton with a double-double now for the Huskies. Inslee from the back with the dig. And Barton tools the block. Add on to the double-double for Kirsten Barton, her second double-double in a row. Yeah, great dig off the net here. Molly Wilson does an awesome job of keeping speed in that ball somewhere. <laughs> Barton can go get it. Let's go. She's I think fired. that's the celebration that you were looking for yeah. after the uh, fadeaway jumper. Barton having some fun out there. Ah, two in the block in the middle, Colby Neal. 6'3", Redshirt Jr. with her biggest swing of the match. I love that, running behind the setter, getting a little creative. Makes it up for that block they have to defend. Going to the ground, Hurd pulls it out. Collier stuffed. Goes to the roll shot. 
Can Washington terminate? Barton, yes she can. Big time swing from the star of the match offensively for Washington, Kirsten Barton, and she's got 20 kills. Incredible job. I'm so impressed with the Huskies and their patience. You know, when the swing is there, they're taking amazing cuts, and when it's not, they're keeping the ball in play. They're playing the ball high off the net, give themselves a chance, and great patience by them. Well, it's deja vu all over again as Kirsten Barton getting her 20th kill of the match. The Huskies in Matt Knight Arena led 10 to five in set five. They lead 10 to five in set five here on their home floor. So can they close it out here on their home floor? The band, the fans excited for the finish to this five setter. And this is how it went down in Eugene. Just a heartbreaker for the Huskies, but a major victory for the Oregon Ducks. Yeah, it shows a lot of the Ducks' grittiness, which is really what their program is, is based on. It's a foundation of what they do, and they're just fighters till the end. So I would expect the same thing to happen tonight. And on the reverse, the Huskies, it's an opportunity to rewrite the script. You think there's any doubt right now that every player in that Washington huddle is thinking about the way that that ended at my, Matt Knight Arena and they have a chance for some redemption here in Seattle? Oh yeah, I think they've been marinating on that one for a, <laughs> a few weeks here, waiting for this opportunity. Well, they put themselves in a good position, but they still need five more points. Husky fans on Halloween Eve coming out, want to celebrate. So Katie Wessels, who's really played a nice match out of the middle, way too much in that one, sails it long. So we'll see, 10-5, time out Oregon. You know, it's so hard to stay present in the moment when you can feel you're so close to winning or we gotta come back. And both sides, I think when they're at their best, are playing one point at a time. Bush, kind of a pause on her approach. They go back to her, touch, and it's a kill. Imani Bush was unable to go in the last match for Washington, and she's knocking on the door of double-digit kills. She's got nine. She's been working and has, a, has a, a knack to find the kills when the team needs them the most in these pressure-filled moments. And I've said it a few times, but great hitters take great swings in big moments. Klein, the back set. Glover, the lefty. Oh, no. Oh, no. Kirsten Barton down and in some pain over on that left side. Hope she's gonna be okay, but she crumpled pretty quickly. And absolute silence here inside Alaska Airlines Arena. The star of the match down for the Huskies. We'll take a time out. She's playing aggressive, leading her team down the stretch in a meaningful fifth setter. She just absolutely was tearing the Oregon defense up, playing with a lot of range. But this is also what great teams do. They, they face adversity and then they find a way. So for the Huskies, it's kind of the next woman up mentality. Well, and you just feel terrible for Kirsten Barton. She missed a month earlier this season, had some back issues. And, you know, you, you're a sophomore coming off a fantastic freshman season where she was all Pac-12 freshman team. And now she's gonna have to exit here against her rival when she was playing at such a high level. And they did take one of the digs away from Kirsten Barton, so to add a little insult to the injury, literally, she doesn't get the double-double. She only has nine digs, does have three aces to go along with the 20 kills, but Tui, Coach Gabriel, as others know her, in that timeout, trying to get her team to rally without their leading scorer today. Yeah, the Huskies are gonna have to dig deep and find a way here. 
fend off Oregon. Hunt in the middle, tip. What an up, beautifully done by Morris. Now Bays, can she get that? Go! Oh, Fletcher all the way into the bench. It's a free ball though, Oregon terminates with Ofebu. Wow. Just, this is exactly what you want out of a Phil setter. Both sides hustling, flying around the court, doing whatever it takes. Morris, wow. come on, getting that from nowhere. And Bays on that hard driven ball gives her team a chance. Both teams all out. The match in the balance here in set five. Too much on that one, wide. From Sophia Tulino onto the floor now in place of Barton. She was red hot in the last match versus Maryland. Nine kills, no errors. Sends that one wide. So impressed she came up. She came out of the court and just went for it. We love to see that. I hope she keeps swinging. Oregon crawls to within two. A three-nothing scoring run. Service error. A big one for momentum. This was the exact score in Matt Knight Arena. 12-9, Washington led. And Oregon ripped off six straight points to win it. Here's Tolino onto the floor for the first time tonight in a crucial time. Ofebu executed to perfection on the slide, terminates. What a She's great got play. 13 kills. Oregon in system, running fast, putting pressure on. Who else would you go to in this moment? And now the big arm of Mimi Collier at the service line. Just too much on that one. The service error and Washington takes the three point lead. First to 15. Both teams with 16 wins this season. Somebody's going to 17 in the next few moments. Oh, what an up by Bays. Got that left hand on it. On the slide again, wide. Ofebu sends it wide, and it is match point number one for the Huskies. Lauren Bays doing it all for the Huskies. Incredible read and left back. That's a sharp hit with her left hand extends. Give these Huskies game point. It would be apropos if she could end it here at the service line. Collier had to adjust. Inslee ends it. And the Washington Huskies getting some revenge.